these are my two terrariums. Uh, as you can see, there is <laughs> bird friend. What are you doing? Oh, well, now she's here. Anyway, uh, I'll go through the top terrarium first. This is just a converted, I think, 30 gallon uh, glass terrarium. Okay, and I have this anti glare guard here because uh, this is also our office and it turns out these lights are so bright that they actually cast quite a strong glare onto the uh, computer screens over there. So having this here not only reflects a lot of the light back onto the plants because I put um, aluminum foil on the inside of this uh, here, there now you can see it, but it also prevents that glare from getting onto the computer screens. Sorry for the bird. Anyway, so I'm just going to take this off and we'll take a look on the inside of this. So here we have the top terrarium. It's a 40 gallon terrarium um, that I used to use for reptiles, but I took the top off and now it's used for plants. Along the top, we have two four foot, 4,000 Kelvin LED shop lights. These are just your regular shop lights. I picked them up for sale uh, at Costco one day. Um, I think, bah, geez, back at the beginning of this year sometime. Time kind of has no meaning when you're a teacher. It's just like school year, not school year, what happened to my life? But anyway, <laughs> um, those these shop lights, I picked them up because they were super cheap on sale. And I was like, I don't know if 4,000 Kelvin or if it's the correct wattage, but I'm going to try it and actually turns out they're perfect for tropical pitcher plants. As you can tell, uh, every leaf in here has a pitcher. The pitchers last forever and they're super, super colorful. And I just kind of lucked out uh, that the intensity and type of light is perfect for tropical pitcher plants. And I'll go into it a little more when I talk about light. Uh, I've lined the outside of this tank with the aluminum foil, as you can see, and it's got the reflective side coming in so that all the light is bouncing around um, the plants, and that's what makes them so colorful and so beautiful. Uh, here, we've got just a simple computer fan, and that fan is just on low, and you can see I've siliconed it to the side of the tank. There we go, just using some aquarium sealant. And uh, I just have it running on low all day, all night. And it does a really good job of pushing the air around, making sure there's enough ventilation inside of this semi-enclosed space. And um, really, I noticed a huge boost in plant growth after I added more ventilation this way. Uh, th this one is pretty nice because you can link it in series to another fan, and I have a second computer fan that's in the terrarium below this one. So really nice, and it wasn't that expensive. As for the plants, uh, we have quite a few tropical pitcher plants here. Okay? And in that deli cup is actually a baby praying mantis that will be moving into a vivarium in the living room after it outgrows that little cup there. Still eating fruit flies, still pretty small. Uh, you can see that these plants are eventually going to outgrow this terrarium. I have some truncata hybrids here that are definitely going to outgrow it soon. But, um, you know, I can get quite a few years out of this tank still for those size plants. And um, I'm looking forward to upgrading eventually to some kind of grow light. Underneath the plants, I have just black lava rock, just got a really big... Uh, bag of it and spread it along the bottom. I think in the future I would rather use um, egg crate diffuser and have it lifted up to create a false bottom that's flat rather than the rocks because sometimes placing the pots on this black lava rock is a little annoying. Uh, you can see like in this pot the pot is kind of slanted instead of sitting straight but um, it honestly looks okay still. There's some algae and some volunteer moss starting to grow down here, but it doesn't damage the bottoms of the pitchers and it holds humidity well. So um, I'm not too upset with that and it looks pretty cool. So that's the top terrarium. Oh, I forgot to mention, 
Uh, this terrarium is pretty solidly intermediate in terms of temperature. It uh, has a maximum of about 85 degrees Fahrenheit during the day, and it gets down to about 65 degrees Fahrenheit at night. Before we go to the next terrarium, I just wanted to point out that I have my little um, mister here. Uh, for me, it's key to have one that has some pump action so that my hands don't get sore from misting so much. I generally mist the tanks once in the morning when I wake up and once in the evening after the lights go off really boost the humidity, especially at night. And then I have my watering can, and then I have my tools here uh, attached to the shelf using magnets. So I have a little forceps here. This one's really good for planting long fiber sphagnum moss. My long forceps, which is good for feeding the pitchers and just in general moving things around. And then I have just a regular pair of scissors. Uh, and I try to uh, remember to disinfect them in between use. For this growing area, I took Reflectix, which is kind of uh, like bubble wrap covered in highly reflective material. And then I used magnets and duct tape to basically seal it, uh, or rather adhere it temporarily to this metal frame. And these magnets are awesome because <laughs> They just, they attach wherever you want and then they pull off really easily. So anytime I want to look at my plants, all I have to do is pull back this thing and then put it up there and take a look at my plants. So that's how I've created the second growing area on the shelf. I used egg crate diffuser and zip ties to create staging. Um, I can adjust the staging uh, as the plants get larger. I'll be able to shift it down and keep the lights at a certain distance away from the plant. But for now, you can see I have kind of two slightly different levels here. And then at the bottom, I have these large seedling or propagation trays rather. And um, these act as runoff for all of the water that comes down from the pots. I filled them with Again, that black lava rock, and I'm trying to seed it with long fibered sphagnum, and I see that some of them are starting to take hold there. I also tried growing long fibered sphagnum in these drip trays, and I think there's one in the back. Yep, there's one back here of just a strawberry container. Honestly, I think this one's doing the best. Uh, all of the empty stuff over here I harvested to put as a top dressing for some recently repotted plants, so. That one's doing the best. But yeah, I really like this setup. Uh, the Reflectix does a really good job of insulating this chamber and um, bouncing the light back. It's the same lighting as the one above, the two um, four foot, 4,000 K LED shop lights from Costco. And the plants are super happy in here. They've been in here for several months now seeing tons of growth, lots of pictures everywhere. And then uh, similar to the setup in at the top, I have the same computer fan, this time just sitting on the staging here and circulating the air all around inside this chamber. Now over here, I have a piece of insulation that I've just kind of wedged into the shelf here. And that's because I've got fish on this side. <laughs> So um, I still have my betta rubra and uh, let's see, it's hard to see them because this light is so bright. I have covered the tops in aluminum foil so that the, the aquatic plants that are in here don't get blasted with light and fill these tanks up with algae. But if we remove these, you can see that I have tons of aquatic plants in here. The fish are a little freaked out because I just ripped off all of the aluminum foil quickly. But I've got a bunch of betta rubra and betta rubra fry still in here. And just a lot of low light aquatic plants to help clean the water and provide cover. So actually I see some of them peeking up in the back there. They're like, you don't normally do this. <laughs> uh, I feed them in the morning and in the evening. And I usually just observe them from the side. Over here, I leave this side uncovered, and they're usually really friendly, but now that I've just ripped off all their top covering, they're a little freaked out. But there's one right there. Oh, sorry, dude. I know it's too bright now.
but they're just starting to get color and uh, I'm super excited to watch these guys grow out. It's been a while since I've had baby fish. But as you can see, the light intensity is pretty high here. So I do have to cover the tops with aluminum foil so that um, it's just not absolutely choked with algae. One thing I plan on doing is taking some of more of that egg crate diffuser and making tops and covering those with aluminum foil. It would provide a much, um, much more rigid structure and maybe even trying to put a few small plants here some seedlings that I could just put on the lids and then easily lift them off with that egg crate diffuser. I just wanted to point out that even though I have this front covered with uh, Reflectix again to help prevent that glare interfering with the computer screens uh, these plants are getting a ton of light and that's because light is reflecting um, off of this Reflectix in the front and then bouncing into this tank. So this is more than enough light for these low light plants and even though it's fully covered with aluminum foil to prevent that direct light, my aquatic plants are still getting a ton of light from that, uh, fr that from the light bouncing from the front here. Um, and the growth has been really luxurious uh, even though there is that top cover there. And again, normally the fish are a lot friendlier, but uh, I have not made many YouTube videos, as you guys know, uh, recently, mainly because of teaching, but they're starting to come out now, starting to get used to this, and starting to wonder if I'm going to feed them. <laughs>